Hello folks, uh, this is uh, episode uh, 8 of Squares Rail. Uh, today we'll be talking about a load of wee things, uh, going back on the old bog side memories, a particular story about uh, an MI5 agent who lived in the bog side. I'll tell you a wee story about that, I'll be talking about video games, I'll be talking about aliens, consciousness, space time. I also plan on talking a wee bit about simulated reality. Uh, but first of all, I want to talk about DJ X-Ray, who sent me some fan mail. Now this is the best shit that I've ever received since I've started doing these wee podcasts. It is off the hook. He sent me this, look. This here wee USB. And it's got... Uh, the wee intelligence symbol, as you can see it says X-Ray, don't know if the camera picks that up, but it says X-Ray It's got the wee intelligence logo It's uh, some job But uh, he's also sending me a t-shirt Now he's going to, got to go and check this stuff out because on them USBs you get all your intelligent mixes All the live performances from, uh, I think it was like 19 fucking 90 2014 or something like that. I got them all put on that USB port and he's also sent me this here Look at that folks It looks like your typical DJ x-ray tip doesn't it? You pull this off here We got a cassette Just looks like your average D D DJ x-ray tip sure right, but no you slide that down and it's got a USB full of all the fucking mixes, every intelligence tip, all the tips I talked about when I was uh, tripping balls and uh, and uh, fucking old school fucking schizophrenia. <laughs> so he sent me them there, and he sent me T-shirts as well. And I would advise you to go and uh, fucking uh, check these out inside each of the. We USBs. It also has all the artwork on the albums that I've stuck on the sides of the fucking screen here for you to look at. Some classic artwork there. <coughs> but I, uh, I was buzzing my head off about that there. It's a great wee fucking gift, and I'm getting fan mail every day. I'll show you another bit of fan mail I got. Shout out to fucking Jimmy for this one, and it also was asked to say hello. to uh my friend, Evans. Hello, Evans. <laughs> Thank you for being good to me too. But I'll show you this here. I'll argue if I got here two seconds of going off camera. So why uh, we're getting all sorts of this, you know? We're getting the whole fucking enchilada. We're, 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 we're. We're hooked on, we're hooked on, you know. We're getting a uh, gas mask to everything sent this. <laughs> Fuck's sake, got that sent to me as well. And it had a bone at it, but I've took a bone off because, you know, fuck, we don't want that lying around. So, uh, that's a fan, mate. That's what's happening lately. We, we might not be making a wage, but we're fucking, we're getting stuff put out there. So, I. Uh, Always good to get some of it, isn't it? But I uh, things I wanted to talk about was uh start I suppose we'll start off with video games and those last uh, episodes when I was talking about uh, the games and that there. Uh fucking I was talking about an old place called City Software and then uh the guy that worked on there heard me talk about it and uh, he fucking got in touch so uh, I didn't get the name him but his name is Kieran Spitzboy that's what they called him Kieran Spitzboy <laughs> so uh, I've, 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 got, I've made a connection with that old retro store which was closed down for over fucking 25 years or something probably more so it just goes to show you but I uh, that's the soft stuff that's been coming from this wee podcast. Also been talking to my friend Porky, who I was talking about a long time ago. 
he said he's got about three or four people wanting to come on. I have no idea what we're actually going to talk about, but I think it'll be a lot of esoteric and new age stuff. So hopefully get that done in the next in the coming days. And folks, I'm a bit nervous here. I don't know why I've got a bit of fucking stage fright on me for some fucking sort of strange reason. But uh, we'll have a few beers. They fucking settle that down. Mm. But uh, so that guy from City Software got in touch. Spiss boy. Spisser, maybe it's Spisser. I knew a guy called Spisser, but they be getting mixed up. I think I think that's that. That's who I was talking about. But I, one of the employees, got in touch and he wanted to watch the video. It's like a, a retro thing. So you be said yourself, the videos are getting out and reaching who you think they'd be reaching. But people are here, you know. Just like uh, when I was talking about the powerhouse as well, a guy actually sent me a script that I wrote. Uh, in the powerhouse uh, over 20 fucking odd years ago and he had a fully intact script that I wrote when I was making videos back there after talking about the videos on here so uh, it's good shit like that but I have video games folks talking about video games I'll show you some of my old retro video games that I have here some of my old titles that I would have played away and I'll play some visuals from these maybe on the screen so you can get an idea what they're like. But everybody knows fucking uh, James Bond. Everybody knows James Bond. Everybody knows Bond. That's the one that they all know. Everybody goes, oh, I fucking play Bond. Boom, sniper rifles, blowing boys' heads off, what have you. But this is the one that most people don't know. This was released later in the life of the N64. And he needed a RAM expansion pack to play it. But it is the spiritual sequel to James Bond. So if any of you are playing this here in your N64 and you'd love to play a game like it, get Perfect Dark. Not the Xbox 360 version or any alternated version that came afterwards. This is the one you want to get. And it also had a female heroine. Just like uh, there was a fashion of making female fucking gaming heroes at the time. And the style of Lara Cloth from Tomb Raider. And... Uh, it was basically James Bond, the mechanics, say the Golden Knight title. But uh, this year was like they had free reign with their imaginations and they pissed it around aliens in Area 51 and it's kind of loosely pissed on the Fallen Blade Runner. So uh, that was a game that uh, maybe you don't really know. And uh, there's another game here, Ridge Racer. I love that on the PS1. These are all games I personally own, you know. So like they might not be critically, critically acclaimed. Or what have you, but Ridge Racer is a fucking great, great fucking racing game. And once you master the drift mechanic, it is fucking brilliant. You just be sailing around the fucking uh, the corners like a fucking like a fucking chimpanzee on speed. Hey, it be great. You be you be motion surfing, motion surfing. But I should be fun. Hey, some game that there, Ridge Racer Revolution. And the first game was Ridge Racer, that was a launch title I had for the PS1. And when I seen them graphics, it was like fuck, fully realized 3D. It was really like a big leap from your Super Nintendo's and Mega Drives at the time. And there's another couple of fucking PS, there's another PS1 game there though. This here is a Die Hard Trilogy. And uh... There was free games built onto that. There was a on rail shooter that you had a like on you could buy for it as well. And it had uh, the city fucking game where it was just like rolling around shooting the fuck out of boys on each floor. And then you had the driving game, which took up on a getting used to, but it was some game as well. And for me personally, that was a fuck, that's a must have for your PS1. It's one of them games you just throw on and get loads of arcade goodness. And there's just out of interest, just show you uh, this wee Mega Man title here. Because some of you watching this here would be, wouldn't be familiar with your NES cartridges, but your NES cartridges were like that there. Look. That was your NES cartridges there. And as you can see, they came in like a black finish. And you pulled them out of the case. 
and you usually had your instruction book, Mega Man. That's a pretty fucking expensive character. You'll pay about 40 for 50 quid for that on eBay now. And uh, there you go, there's the artwork. Pretty cool wee game. As you can see, see that there NES logo there? The way it's kind of stretched. Knocks the price off that there. I couldn't fucking change that in CEX. They wouldn't change it for me. But that's your NES character. Just, so just talking about video games there, you know. Get these on the buzz of that. And there's the outside. And we all remember back in the day. You know, hey, go, get it work, get it work. I can't get it, hey, fuck, I'm work. <laughs> Does it work? Buy it off a fucking TV. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat all bound up inside it. Uh, fun fact, folks, blowing on your cartridges actually uh, can make the fucking H connectors rust, and it's not a fucking good, a good uh, fucking pro tip, pro tip. All the women in the back, back seats now are getting fucking dry as fuck listening to this shit. Oh, you make them wet, you square, you make them wet, talk about video games, oh, you make them wet, hey. <laughs> but I. Uh, some geek, some geek, geek shit fee. But I video games, and there's another fucking cracker game there too, look. Sega Rally, hey. Forget about fucking Red Racer at the end of the day. Sega Rally is where it's at. Uh, that there's uh, off the fucking hook. Off the fucking hook, and that was some Saturn conversion too. But that's just some retro games that I have. And about the house, you know, I've got the. Uh, Oh, what do you do, Zay going on, you know? So, uh, what do you do? Hmm. So, uh, I suppose, uh, we were talking the other day about shit, too. About fucking, you know, about the idea that space travel, sort of a bit of a Joe Rogan idea, really, but the idea that space travel can be done in chemicals like DMT. But then I was going further with the idea and kind of tinkering, tinkering with it, looking at it as if I've never looked at it before. And saying, well, you know, fucking spaceships don't necessarily need gears, do they? I mean, it's not necessarily, I mean, if you're going to travel through space and time, that your vehicle necessarily needs to be something that's traveling through space. And, uh, I don't know, it could be a conscious vehicle. No, a vehicle rooted in consciousness. Because uh, the old idea was that space and time were separate. And then Einstein came along and he realised that space and time were entangled in the one thing. And that being the idea that a mass object pulls certain things upwards, like gravitational pull will create a mass object. And that mass object will distort time, where, where, where time will run slower the further it comes away from a mass object. And that is the, 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 the fabric of space time and they're and they're twining with you know, like a mass object. And uh the further science now, prevailing science is coming forward now that uh consciousness itself might be entangled with space time. So if uh like Einstein uh theorized, you know, he's weird that the, 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 the confines of space and time being separate. For all you know, take on them drugs. Not necessarily taking them drugs, meditating and natural states of consciousness. You could possibly get to these places too, in natural realms of the, the human psyche. You know, you could steer, steer your thoughts probably. The uh, parts of the neurochemistry that uh, create weird glitches just in, uh, in, 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 in the curvature of space, time and consciousness. But I don't know, I'm theorizing. I'm probably talking pure bullshit to somebody like Richard Feynman if he wasn't listening now. But my idea is that uh, I don't necessarily think you have to have physical confines to travel through the physical confines of space and time. I believe uh, like uh, you can probably go there. You can probably beat the confines of space time with consciousness if it is an overlapping entity. If it does override consciousness and time. I mean, one of the big miracles they talk about is that uh, the idea that the Big Bang itself is, uh, is consciousness manifesting matter. Uh, some of the people say, you know, give me, 
Uh, science says give me one miracle and I'll, we'll explain the rest, you know, because the miracle they can't answer is that something came from nothing. But my theory is that that, that, that nothing wasn't necessarily nothing, it was somehow conscious and manifested physicality. And we're just sort of confined within the physicality. We can't really understand the source structure of whatever it was that started. But I am anyway, going off track about that. But there's a guy called uh, David Bone. I don't know how to pronounce his name because I watch his videos and stuff like that there. But uh, he, uh, he's a fucking scientist. He was uh, Einstein's wee fucking brother, basically. Like his wee fucking henchman. And Einstein wanted him to pass on you know, the tale of, uh, of consciousness along with him and stuff. So, uh, you know, he was trying to pass on his knowledge. Einstein thought that this Bone Boy was like a fucking, the main man, David, you call him, D -D David Bone, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's B-O-H-M, that's how you spell it. But this David Bone Boy, uh, he uh, sort of rebelled against all the, 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 the main physicists and theoretical uh, no ideologues at that time because he was trying to... Uh, he 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 wasn't satisfied that the 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 the, the reductionist scientific model of like physicality and the materialist sort of view of things. He wanted to somehow merge it with spirituality because he was seeing something that was intuitively in us all as thinking beings that need to be reconciled with the the, the, the scientific model, you know. So uh, so he fucking uh, he started away at that there. He uh, started talking to this uh, Indian philosopher, uh, Dr. Krishnamurti or whatever the fuck you call that boy, he's big, big on the consciousness. And uh, when they had this meeting, uh, when he tried to explain the, the reconciliation, he was trying to make between science and spirituality. Uh, your man Krishnamurti said to him, oh you understand the same problem I've been faced with as well. You know, uh, the relationship between the two, trying to trying to uh, understand that grey area that merges them both but uh, he's a very interesting guy and he's currently where I'm at because I used to be a hardline atheist one of these boys and personally I think I was running away from some higher source or some higher explanation of his beauty and finesse did that I just couldn't confront straight away but uh, I tackled it for years back on the atheism I could, I could have practically wore a fedora for fuck's sake I was that big on it, you know, I was rolling out God at every corner. But uh, the older I get and the more fucking inclined I get to explore this year, the more I realise, you know, there is something deeper going on. And there is uh, a bit of a fucking scientific fucking thing happening, like. But uh, it's mind boggling, like. But uh, that's what I was talking about when I was saying that there. I wanted to talk about how, you know, maybe extraterrestrial vehicles can't fucking travel and substances and that old Joe Rogan idea of maybe those substances being left here left here is uh, interstellar travel because we can't get there in the physical confines of our bodies traveling in a vehicle a rocket ship whatever but we can't travel there in our conscious our consciousness vehicles and our minds by uh, I don't know somehow bending space and time by consciousness overriding that we don't be entangled in another space and time I don't know not fully into the fucking science but the way I try and get out in my head is as if consciousness is an overbearer of space and time, then that consciousness probably wraps around all space and time. Almost like a god of sorts, an all knowing, uh, uh, enveloping source of power, you know what I mean? But I, uh, and that's what I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, you know, you don't necessarily need a spaceship. There's a, uh, an old uh, fucking African tribe called the Dogon people. D O G O N if you want to Wikipedia, but uh, they were able to report interstellar uh, like phenomena, and those uh, like solar systems and stuff like that that were not uh, visible to the naked eye at that time or uh, telescopic fucking technology, you know, the Westerners, but they reported these uh, these like astrological fucking uh, positions of stars and stuff that were just not available to normal human consciousness elsewhere, even more sophisticated. Like uh, like developed cultures, there was a French man discovered them, and uh, and then there's a lot of people in there theorizing that they were actually traveling interstellar. They were making, they were going the other fucking far reaches of the solar systems and their minds through uh, their you know their psychedelic drugs and their their tribal habits. 
so it's like after the dark ages god knows what fucking consciousness fucking knowledge we learned from plants and and even psychedelics and i know it's there's a whole new age phenomena going on at the minute with psychedelics and i don't want to either get under the bandwagon that but me personally i've been waiting for the psychedelic movement since i was a wee lad ever since ecstasy i've been waiting to explore psychedelics so i'm probably a bit biased in my fascination with it all but uh i'm are starting to think that consciousness is uh is we're not so much a point of focus within that but consciousness is a a rich a rich uh you know enveloping force almost like space itself that it it, it derives focal points and in, inanimate objects but it doesn't necessarily uh spring from those inanimate objects i.e loving creatures you know what i mean well, maybe I spoke a wee bit too much of the magic tobacco. But that uh, we're 20 minutes in, so if I could talk more about that there, I've done the video games. And uh, if I could talk about that MI5 agent that I was telling you about. Did I say that at the start? Uh, about the uh, MI5 agent that loved in Derry. Uh, infiltrated the bog site. So this is a. Uh, this is probably a threat to national security, this fucking podcast, but we're sharing it anyway for the for the kicks and lulls. <laughs> but uh, back in the day, there was this woman called Annie, and she had a British, a harsh British accent, and uh, she she moved onto the bog side, and everybody took her around her when everybody was like, oh, this woman's really sad, like, she's a well, nice wee woman, hey. And uh, she would talk to us, and we were all sound, and everybody, uh, everybody got along with her. And she would come onto the mobile, very friendly, lived there for a few years. Everybody didn't think an awful of it. Then the dead of night one time, she was dragged out of her house by MI5, reportedly, and taken away out of the fucking country. Because the IRA were going to fucking blow her head off. Because news got around that she was actually an MI5 informant. And I'll tell you a story better than that there. Whenever fucking we were ways, we were all sitting around in our backyard. And it all made sense to me when you put two and two together after looking back in retrospect. She had all these family photos of her family in the past and the family. And the and the picture frames, but the families looked like uh the pictures looked like they were they were done too professional for the time, like they were very like nineteen eighties, uh, uh, fucking butch guy with a bibby, you know, like the whole like soft focus, really professionally done, and I was all who's out there, and I mean, she was all uh, oh that's 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 my uh my mother and father, and I was all I. I didn't think nothing of it, but they look like fucking, like fucking pictures ripped out of a magazine. I was alright, didn't think nothing of it. And she used to ask me about my father. Why is your father in America, Paul? And I'd be like, ah, I don't know, uh, I don't know, couldn't answer questions. And she would get all of us as we went, and she would all ask us questions about her parents and her families. And certain people would have been connected on the IRA or whatever, you not say nothing about that. But uh, they would be asking them as questions about it. And one of my friends, uh, Da, was high up in the fucking Ra. And, uh, and his dad's dead now, but uh, she would just always f say to him, Oh yeah, what, what's, what happened? And, oh yeah, that's right, and I'll talk to him and all. And she was like a pure dodgy woman, but everybody thought she was sound as fuck. And one night when I was a wee boy, this is how I knew she was watching like a fucking hawk out that wonder. Because one time when I was a wee lad, these two boys fucking stared at me. And I was only the guts of fucking seven or eight at the time. Maybe nine, maybe about nine or ten. And then these two boys stared at me and fucking uh, I was all I and they were all slagging me about my dad all I your dad doesn't know like it was all this fucking juvenile shit really and uh, I was all I whatever fucking but and then one thing led to another 
and I pushed the boy and the boy pushed me and then the minute I pushed him back, boom, he just swooped me in the head, boom, hit me a big fucking boot in the face. And I got a big sting, but see the minute I got boot in the face, all you heard was, I fucking seen that fucking Colin, I fucking seen that. She was out like a fucking shot. Now, what that said to me was, she was watching that up until a point of actual danger, but then she probably was, uh, enforced by law the act of anybody is in a fucking dangerous zone where they could die so she was probably watching that me getting confronted by them as the whole way through and then the minute i got whacked she came straight out had to do by law what was required of her so that's where her sort of cover was blown a few times and she used to always be on the mobile listening and then one time then all the wee lads uh, like fucking boys, my elder, I was a lot younger than him, but we were like snotter boxes, we were always running down the street. And one time uh, we were down in the fucking in Glen Fatta Park and all the Brits came in. And then next thing, two of the Brits fucking were on the buzzer, on the fucking, on the phone, no, on, on the sh radio, radio and on. And she just walked, went walking down to four or five of the Brits and was all saying, yeah, I come from fucking... West fucking Midlands and fucking all this, and you're good boys, but these boys are good boys as well. And she was trying to make out like she was sticking up from all us, but they must have had some sort of fucking, I don't know, dialogue privately. I don't know what it was, but anyway, cut a long story short, something went on in higher sources, and she was dragged out in the fucking dead of night, and uh. I'll not say too much, but she used to fucking always ask me questions and say, yeah, that's strange, isn't it, Paul? And, 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 and you know what I would notice about her too? See if we were ever talking improper or anything. She would try and act like she was a moral busybody and somehow give us guidance as, as, if, as if we weren't getting guidance in our own community. So she had a, a backwards, a, a backwards, a hidden backwards viewpoint off us, you know what I mean? From where we came from. But it was all hidden. But she was shrewd high and the way I think about it too, the way the way when she was she was at about in her fifties, fifty five, maybe 50, 56, probably going on sixty, she looked she was worn out a bit. And uh but I was talking to that boy about this years later and he said to me it was probably her last big job, a big last a big last uh a big last hooray before she got her retirement. She would have been sent on to do a really fucking heavy job and filter it in the box side and find out all information. Because nobody had bugs or fuck all them days. They had to send somebody in. But what I loved the, the shrewdness of it was the fact that she had a British accent. They thought, must have thought that that would have been a great. They'd never suspect that somehow. Because she's British, you know, they, they would, that would put a smoke screen or somehow. Because she was just outright with or, or I was thinking also the intelligence would probably be going. Now you could slip, love in there, long term. Just use your British accent in case you do slip up. No, no that sort of way. But uh, in the dead of night, I'd love, to, I'd love to know where she is now. Probably dead, old bastard. But uh, she was up there raising her tight. But as my friend told me about that, and that just showed you back in them days, MA5, infiltration, coming at all angles, befriending you when you're a wee lad. They all probably have a record in every one of us from them days. That's how much the Brits infiltrated fucking people here, like. They were living in your community, befriending you. And if they weren't befriending you, they were buying out people in your community and putting on fucking shit over them they fucking blackmail them it's fucking mad but isn't it isn't it fucking mad like but i annie forget her second name but she used to fucking talk and she's going no you're fuck you're right square but she goes i seen that colin i seen that me buddy knows she goes oh you're all right square you're all right i go we didn't come with this fucking stuff at the beginning but did you in retrospect she could have stopped the whole fucking thing, but she must have been watching, fishing information behind the curtains. The man and I got whacked in the fist, boom, she was out like a fucking shot. So, uh... Hello, folks. Uh, sorry that fucking went dead there again. It always happens every episode. Hey, it goes dead in about half an hour. But, uh, just talking about your woman, Annie. I fucking mad, hey. 
I was back in the day when everybody hung around at Doc's Mobile in Glenfana Park as well. It was uh, it was uh, the, the local hangout spot. Uh, you had every dog stick hanging around there, just right beside the high flats where the Free Dairy Museum is now and the wee mobile is. There used to be a wee red mobile that started off as, then that progressed onto the bus. Then it became the back of the bus, then it became the shell, then it became the the fucking the the wee hanger fucking thing that it is now. But uh, you had everybody back in them days, you had Funny Coil, John Stay, R. Gareth, Gary O'Neill, B. Ryan, D. O'Neill, everybody in the bog side sat there, Doc Dirty. Has some checkers, everybody pitching against the pebble dash wall where the Free Dairy Museum stands now. Uh, everybody would have sat there from from dawn to night, throwing coins and arguing with each other over who could get the fucking who should get the fucking coppers and fives that they won. And there will be some arguments down there. And then after a while, then Doc Dirty bought. Uh, Bought the shed in his backyard, and everybody would sit on there the the early hours of the fucking morning, gambling and playing cards. My cousin Gareth, who is a is a bit of a fucking card player, he started his days off in Doc Dirty's shed with Vinnie Coy, the legend it is. <laughs> Big Vinnie was some boy. That man starred in movies and everything for God's sake. And he would just be down along with us, pitching down, big fucking heavy cunt that he was, pitching away with all us young fellas. He'd be down every night, keeping the bog side alive. That's when the bog side still had a heart before it was all ripped apart by capitalism and consumerism and lost its community because everybody got too selfish with their own values of money. But back then we all had one direction. We hit a damn Brits for killing a load of in our own fucking turf, you know what I mean? So that's why you sort of have to understand the, the, the discontent there when I talk about your woman Annie. The people from over the fog on far end of the water listening to me thinking, who's this boy? There was reason why we hit at them, you know what I mean? Good reason. But uh, that's what I was talking about too, about aliens, consciousness and space time there earlier on, about you know, how maybe like a sp consciousness does overlap space time, just the way time overlaps space, you know. If there is a relationship between space time and consciousness, then can you travel over the bounds of space time through your conscious vehicle of mind and you know, can does mind actually override matter in long distances past the speed of light or something like that? And then it goes on to simulated reality and literally I've been thinking about the idea that uh, this is a kind of mind blower this idea but you have arguments with people that believe in uh, simulated reality but then they hold the testament that they're hardline atheist in the same coin. It's like if you believe in simulated reality you cannot rule out a god. Simulated reality now puts the forward they, 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 they prevail in science, in current science, that they must confront the possibility that God has exist, does exist, or may exist, or a, at least a conscious entity that knows the reality bounds and limitations set by a creator is now a, fa a fucking, totally fucking, uh, you know, like fucking believable idea. Like, so, simulated reality, if you believe in that, you cannot rule out. A conscious creator. Now it might not be Jesus Christ, and it might not be Allah, it might not be fucking any other current idea of religion, but it does not rule out a creator. So all these guys with their fedora hats, as I said before, that are so confident in atheism, if you're wanting to entertain the idea that this is a some of the reality, which uh, work by Nick Bostrom has been held up in fucking high regard in the best universities of the world that uh, there is a there is a great chance that this could be simulated reality could be a, a a stream of simulations running on on itself then we have to start going who's running these simulations and as that summit as the runner of these simulations playing games with us 
playing games with reality, playing games with uh, individual consciousness and itself, you know what I mean? So and then you're coming to the point there where skepticism and logic are no longer the 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 the, found, the, found, the, the, the foundational uh, 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 structures of science only. Whereas for years and years and years it was always science. They were only they were only purveyors of skepticism, but now logic and skepticism, due to the simulated reality theory, uh, bringing forth the idea of conscious creators, is now uh, becoming a. Uh, science's enemy, the idea of skepticism and logic, where skepticism and logic has now turned against the very thing that promoted it for years because until scientists start broadening their own biases and start looking for a god rather than rolling it out, then they'll always be blind to the possibility of a conscious creator that has uh, had knowledge that we are unaware of. But uh, it's things like that there, that was a, 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 an idea that I found mind-blowing, you know. It's like uh, skepticism and logic, uh, the very foundation, my, my, I was telling a friend about it, he was saying to me that he reckons that the very foundations of science and even logic itself are reaching its uh, limits, you know. Apart from physical offshoots and novelty and creations and gadgets and stuff like that and light bulbs and what have you. The, the novelty and physica physicality can go only go so far before it starts turning on itself and destroying the word itself. And there's like he was saying to me how he re reckons that uh, science as the mode of interpreting reality is reaching its limits and things like that they're anomaly of God existing on the sum of the reality. You no know, uh, theory, he, he reckons that that there's proven the limitations of science, how it is being forced to question itself. So I uh, that's a mind blowing idea to me, the idea that science is now bringing on the idea that conscious creators can exist. And if conscious creators can exist and they can toy with the simulated reality, then that means the only limitations we face are the, the, the very confines of how atoms, no atoms can be like fucking manipulated themselves, either by a creator or soon to be through atom manipulation that humans are fucking discovering because we are now on the cusp of being able to mold atoms into any form or any wanting object or any uh, like a reality construct we we want to do you know like we are on the we are on the cusp of atom manipulation and if you don't know what atom manipulation is look up uh, the IBM experiment from, uh, involving atoms where they rearranged atoms on a uh, particle for a molecular level and uh, we're able to write out the letters IBM and it's progressed so much in the last fucking 20 years where they've made full animated map, full animated uh, sequences like cartoons uh, where the drawings were made by single atoms to create the pictures. Now they're rudimentary, they're stick men and stuff, but uh, if we can make animations and you know on that level then there's going to be someday where you'll have microbots going into your body and the only conf confines of reality will be what the imagination can do with atoms themselves so that's a mind blower unless of course the conscious creator gives us an apocalypse or judgment day or something <laughs> but then you go into the realms of religion and that's what the, that's what the, I'm sort of seeing with that guy Bohm was talking about, B-O-H-M uh, how he's merging spirituality with a, with, with, with a quantum world because that seems to be what's happening it's like religious ideas can be thrown out the window as like a sort of separate phenomena from you know the actual scientific objective fucking structure of what's going on so uh, my mind's blown lately by it all but I uh, folks I think we'll leave it at that there hey uh, we talk, talked a fair bit we done video games, we done x-ray we done an AMA5 agent, we done simulated reality, and we done uh, skepticism and logic no longer being the foundational force of science, but now structures that threaten science. So yeah, you've had a rather deep few few deep conversations there. Today. But I so I hope you like that there one. Until next time folks. Don't let the bastards grind you down. Up life.